a good day to everyone. Thank you for joining us for this very special online event celebrating the two-year anniversary of the Acronis Bulgaria R&D facility. My name is Dragomir Simeonov. Thank you for having me. I will be your MC for this event. Today, we will not only be celebrating this major milestone for Acronis and its R&D facility in Sofia, but also taking a look at some of the amazing technologies that have been developed there, as well as taking a look at the future of R&D for this and all the other Acronis research facilities. We have a terrific lineup of speakers for you today. But firstly, some housekeeping notes. This conference is being recorded and we will email you a link to the recording afterward so you can share it with friends and colleagues who could not attend. Your microphone will be muted throughout the event, so please submit your questions through the Zoom Q&A interface. Now, let me announce the names and uh, the titles of our participants today. Mr. Sergei Belosu, founder and CEO of Acronis, Mr. Stanislav Prutasov, Acronis Technology President and Co-Founder, Mr. Plamen Toshev, Managing Director of Acronis Bulgaria, and Mr. Graham Hackland, Williams Group CIO. We have a very special guest today also, Mr. Tomislav Donchev, Deputy Prime Minister of Republic of Bulgaria, and Mr. Donchu Barbalov, Deputy Mayor of Sofia Municipality. We have prepared and a very special musical surprise for you. Please stay till the end for the live concert. And to kick off this event, we have with us, as I already mentioned, uh, distinguished guests. First of all, Mr. Tomislav Donchev, the Deputy Prime Minister of the Republic of Bulgaria. Deputy Prime Minister Donchev will be making an official speech. Prime Minister Donchev, if you please. Hello, dear colleagues and dear friends. Two years ago, you made the right decision to invest in Bulgaria. This means that you do not just have two years of experience, but you have two years of unique experience. You have chosen the right time, I mean during the term of our government, and the right place, the triangle between the university, the Council of Ministers, and the television. As you might have noticed recently, the world we find ourselves in sometimes denies progress and sometimes forces it. Thank you for being on the forefront of technological progress and thank you for your boldness to invest in the future right here and right now. As for the quite overused catchphrase about the living and interesting times, it's up to you to make it curse or blessing. Happy birthday, Arconis. Thank you, Minister Donchev. Thank you very much. And now we are expecting a few wor words from Mr. Don Chubarbalov, Deputy Mayor of Finance and Healthcare, Deputy Mayor of Innovations and Digitalizations of Sofia Municipality. The floor is yours, Mr. Barbalov. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Dear Mr. Belusov, dear Mr. Toshev, dear ladies and gentlemen, employees of the company, Thank you for invitation to take part in the celebration of the second anniversary of the launch of Acronis in Sofia. It is an honor for me to congratulate you and wish you health and success to the company and all of its employees. Congratulations on the growing in this short period with nearly 300 employees and congratulations on the company's plans for new developments as a research and development world-class center. The presence of Acronis in Sofia is an indicator of the confidence in the changes we have started in our city, as well as the business environment in it. The technology sector is the fastest growing in the city, 
which creates conditions for the development of other industries through digitalization. Because companies like yours also invest in training, and that's the key. In terms of digital connectivity, cybersecurity is a digi digital shield. This protection is a very important for all management systems, services, industries, and businesses that we use in our society. The IT sector is still a development one during the pandemic because it is the fastest to change and adapt. We see how digital technologies have become an opportunity to continue the work of many businesses and sectors, including ours. The topic of cybersecurity cyber is essential for the work of the municipality. We develop our electronic services and Mayor Fandakova set a task to check the security of our systems and networks. I am glad that your company is involved in this process. As part of the team of the Mayor, we work on and we support first increasing the capacity of our employees in the field of digitalization. Second, the security of the electronic services of the municipality, as well as the internal administrative connections in our municipality. Third, encourage companies that invest in the innovation and already create trained staff themselves. Sofia Municipality has developed a strategy for digital transformation of Sofia, according to a project and methodology of the European Commission. The mission of this strategy is to create a series of measures to strengthen the technology business in Sofia and to enable the development of innovative solutions for digital transformation of the city in order to create and implement new digital services and solutions. When investments in our development and education goes together, we can be more confident that we are going to overcome the challenges we face and the decisions we want to make. Thank you and congratulations again. Thank you so much, Mr. Barbalov. Dear participants, I want to remind you that you can submit your questions through the Zoom Q&A interface. Unfortunately, Mr. Belousov, the founder and CEO of Acronis, could not participate last minute changes. So Mr. Protasov, the title floor is yours. Are you ready? I am. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Okay. Uh, I need to take over the control. Sergey indeed uh, could not join. Unfortunately, he is not feeling uh, well. And I really hope that it's nothing serious. But you know, when you work uh, over the clock, sometimes your body uh, could not actually stand the load. Uh, IT team, I still, oh, okay. I do have control. Very good. Let's start. I will uh, actually uh, talk uh, about Acronis, just to remind you about our mission and what we do. Uh, we are leader in uh, cyber protection. Uh, we are a company founded in Singapore and headquartered in uh, Schaffhausen, Switzerland. So we are a uh, dual headquartered uh, company. And uh, as we used to say, we have uh, dual headquarters for dual protection. It actually comes very handy that uh, we have uh, our main uh, company offices in neutral and uh, uh, independent countries. And uh, that help us to serve uh, our customers and partners all across the world. And uh, that help us uh, to uh, deliver on our vision and uh, uh, on our uh, mission. And our mission is to protect all the workloads, all the data and uh, all the systems. We are fast grow growing company, even this year, which has been uh, quite hectic to the date. Uh, uh, we are still growing very well. Uh, our cloud business is growing more than 100% uh, year over year. And we continue expanding uh, uh, our uh, business and our engineering capabilities and uh, we are well on track in, on building our Bulgarian 
uh, R&D center is uh, the major R&D center of Acronis uh, around the globe. Uh, we have a lot of customers, uh, probably uh, any company you can find in Fortune 1000 list is our customer. We have uh, more than uh, half a million businesses worldwide being protected by our solutions. And we have a growing number of consumers using our consumer products. Uh, right now, we are uh, not uh, uh, very big company. I mean, by uh, uh, all standards, we are mid-sized company, but we are growing very fast. We are more than 1,500 people across the globe, and uh, we have uh, more than uh, 33 locations uh, around the world. And uh, we localize our product in uh, more than 30 languages and we sell them in more than 150 countries. <clears throat> so uh, what we do, uh, for protecting uh, the data, protecting the world so right now, when the world uh, actually already became digital uh, has uh, major challenges. The main challenge is definitely complexity. Right now, the number of devices uh, every uh, one of us uh, have in its possession uh, actually uh, over the last 10 uh, years grown tremendously. Right now you have uh, smart watches, you have smart cars, you have smart refrigerators, you have uh, your home office connected to the internet all, all, all the time. All those uh, devices require a protection because there are people who uh, want uh, uh, to take over and who want to use them uh, for their own benefit, whether it's good or bad benefit. The cost of protection is growing tremendously. Because, first of all, because uh, the complexity, when you have a complexity, the cost uh, grows exponentially. And second, because the amount of data being generated uh, is growing uh, uh, also exponentially. By uh, year 2030, there would be probably uh, 500 uh, zettabytes of data requiring protection in the world. And uh, uh, for all the workloads we have right now, they're generating a lot of data. For example, a single connected car generates up to 400 terabytes of data every day, uh, which actually means that uh, you will end up uh, 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 with more than petabyte uh, of data in a year or so. Uh, definitely security is the challenge. According, for example, to uh, Interpol, right now uh, between 60 to 80 percent of all crimes uh, in the world is uh, that or another way related to cyberspace. So cyber uh, uh, crime becoming the major issue uh, for uh, both uh, businesses and uh, for the criminals uh, themselves. And privacy. Uh, privacy is being an issue for both businesses, government, and consumers. Because right now we are generating that much uh, data, that uh, big, digital uh, uh, track in our lives that actually if you have an access to someone's uh, data you can actually manipulate uh, the person uh, you can influence his decision and you can uh, eventually even ruin his life so uh, cyber protection becoming uh, the fifth uh, basic needs uh, you have to take care of your data. You have to ensure that uh, uh, your uh, cyber presence is protected and uh, it's you who control it. Uh, 
And this is exactly what we do. That's our solution. We believe that cyber protection, and we define cyber protection uh, as a SAPAS, safety, accessibility, privacy, authenticity, and security, is the answer. Uh, and uh, safety helps you to ensure that no data are being lost, that uh, you have at least one additional copy of uh, your data and you are protected from both uh, cyber incidents and uh, uh, physical nature incidents like uh, your uh, systems being stolen or destroyed uh, by natural disaster or anything else. Accessibility is very important because you need to have an ability to access your data at the time you need it. So accessibility is an important part uh, of uh, uh, our solution and our vision. Privacy, again, very important. Uh, actually, right now, most of the companies, uh, legal departments spends most of their time working on privacy issues and uh, for consumers and small businesses uh, they do not have legal departments with hundreds of uh, very qualified uh, lawyers so somebody needs to help them to take care of the privacy authenticity uh, very important uh, to have uh, an insurance that the data which uh, uh, you spent a lot of uh, time and effort to protect that this data was not altered by anybody <clears throat> and that you can uh, always be sure that uh, the data are authentic and uh, exactly the same as you uh, had it when you uh, protected it and security all of us knows uh, about ransomware hacking group for both uh, state actors and uh, criminal actors and so on and so forth. So security is also an important part of cyber protection. And uh, the solution which gives you integrated uh, ability to take care of every part of SAPAS is actually the solution which uh, really protects you and your data. And uh, if you think a bit, uh, actually, uh, somehow cyber protection is uh, uh, very similar to protecting uh, your health uh, and uh, uh, your body. Uh, in cyber protection, the question is not uh, whether the incident will happen. The question is when it happened and uh, how well you are protected to take care of it. The same actually with us as uh, biological uh, species. Uh, the question is not when we are going to be infected. Uh, we definitely, all of us on this call, had some illnesses in the past and uh, will have some illnesses in the future. The question is uh, how well we are prepared to take care of ourselves and uh, taking care of uh, viruses both in cyber and uh, physical world is uh, pretty much the same procedure so first of all you need uh, to have uh, prevention in case of biological it's uh, hygiene healthy lifestyle trainings uh, regular checkup the same actually in digital world so uh, you need to ensure that you have uh, uh, periodical checks uh, how safe you are. You need to ensure that you have policies of uh, uh, reacting to cyber incidents and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, then comes detection. If you have some symptoms and symptoms uh, in physical world uh, could be like high temperature and in cyber world it could be like uh, unexpected and ability to access your data or uh, high load on your servers or whatever, uh, you need actually to determine quite fast whether you are indeed being attacked by a virus or 
uh, it just intermittent issue. And this is what we do for prevention, detection, response. Extremely important uh, for, to protect yourself in case uh, of us as humans, uh, you usually go to doctor, you get some medicine, you do some analysis and so on and so forth. In case uh, of uh, cyber systems, uh, you sometimes turn off some of the uh, your systems, block the access, uh, stop the malware from execution, uh, and so on and so forth. Recovery, uh, the same uh, in case of uh, uh, digital world, you need probably to take your uh, backup and restore your system from that. You probably need to ensure that your disaster recovery solution helps you uh, to provide service uh, to your employees and your customers uh, uh, while you are taking care of uh, uh, attack leftovers. And forensic, very important part of it uh, to understand how you got uh, infected, how you got attacked. Uh, the same are very important both in uh, digital world and uh, uh, physical world, biological world. And as such, that's essentially what we do and uh, we have uh, in reality we have only one uh, for product for that is definitely can be used uh, by modules it can be used uh, all together or some specific models but uh, essentially what we do is acronym cyber protect and uh, it consists of uh, many parts and uh, major parts uh, are Acronis Cyber Cloud, uh, which uh, helps you to protect your uh, data, to create backup copies, uh, to ensure that uh, uh, you have active protection fighting uh, uh, potential malware and uh, other threats. Uh, Acronis Cyber Pro Platform. Uh, actually, slightly more than uh, a year and a half ago, we realized that uh, in order to make uh, our solution uh, working really well for all the diversity of uh, use cases, customers and partners we have, we need to open uh, our system and to allow our partners to create uh, uh, their own solution based on our platform. As such, we opened the API and we are building the community and uh, our goal to have uh, 100,000 certified developers uh, in less than uh, two, two years. Acronis Cyber Infrastructure and Systems. That's uh, uh, the system we use ourselves. The system is being used by our customers. Uh, it's actually fault tolerant, uh, high performance system capable uh, to host our specific workloads and workloads of our customers. And uh, apparently, Acronis Cyber Services, uh, because uh, our partners uh, and uh, our customers they need uh, help in understanding uh, the level of uh, potential. Uh, threat and they need to understand how to protect themselves. So, uh, just to recap, the major part uh, of Acronis Cyber Protect uh, solution it's uh, proactive protection, active protection, and reactive protection. It's very important part of. Uh, our vision because you need uh, proactively to monitor what is happening uh, with your system and you need uh, to prepare your systems to be protected against possible uh, attacks and uh, bad actors. Uh, active protection uh, basically helps you uh, to monitor system real time and uh, do some actions when there is uh, 
potential threat that attack is being in progress. And reactive pot uh, protection is also uh, important because it helps you to recover faster and it helps you uh, also to, to, uh, to get your services and your products back online in uh, minimal time. Cyber notary, uh, uh, digital identity uh, powered by blockchain. That's the way we can actually ensure that uh, the data uh, being that uh, your particular documents or uh, copy of uh, your system as a whole is uh, not altered uh, between the uh, time when you actually uh, created a copy. And uh, cyber uh, privacy, you need to have uh, a control over your privacy and you need to understand who and when have access to your critical data. A uh, couple more words on uh, uh, acronym cyber services. So uh, what we offer to our uh, customers is uh, security training uh, for sure, because that's the basis. Uh, protection assessment, uh, incident re response, and uh, security operation. We have uh, cyber protect operating centers uh, in uh, three locations in the world, in uh, Singapore, in Schaffhausen, and the, in the United States. So we can actually implement, uh, follow the SUN model. And uh, we are ready to share the findings and we are ready to help our partners, uh, customers, uh, and friends uh, to protect themselves based on the analytics uh, which we collect in those uh, uh, cyber protection operating uh, centers. We have professional services uh, who help actually to deliver our cyber services to our partners. Uh, we do multiple projects uh, uh, with both uh, uh, businesses, uh, government, and uh, sport uh, teams uh, all across the, the globe. Uh, we actually work uh, both on the uh, cyber protection front and uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning project. And uh, we just recently announced Acronis Cyber Unit. It's uh, actually uh, supposed to be some kind of club where we can have our partners, uh, friends, uh, education, sales, marketing, sharing the best practices, uh, sharing the stories and getting the help uh, uh, in order to uh, protect the cyberspace. And we have this idea to measure uh, the level of protection and we call it uh, cyber fit. We started with uh, cyber fit uh, workloads uh, when we actually do a quick assessment of the system based on the uh, number of criteria, whether it's protected from possible attack or not. And uh, uh, then we realized that actually we can help our customers and partners uh, to understand their level of protection better. And we are working on that. We are working creating the training, creating uh, uh, the tools for uh, doing this uh, uh, cyber feed uh, assessment and uh, providing the services uh, uh, to close the gaps when it's needed. Uh, definitely, if you are talk about uh, if you are talking about cyber fit, you uh, should consider the countries as well, because uh, many countries spend uh, enormous effort right now uh, in order to become uh, protected from cybercrime. Uh, Bulgaria 
is actually doing a good job, definitely there would be incidents. And the good thing is that Bulgaria is learning on those incidents and uh, uh, Bulgaria understand the, how serious that pot uh, potential threat is. And CyberFit uh, Sports uh, is actually the program we are implementing with uh, sports te uh, teams uh, across all possible sports. And uh, uh, we do it uh, for our partners, customers, and employees. So two years ago, we opened uh, an office uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, it's becoming our primary R&D center. And when I'm talking about R&D, it does not mean only engineering center. We have a great uh, data center operation team in Bulgaria. We have great support team in Bulgaria. We have great inside sales team in Bulgaria. And uh, uh, we actually, indeed, as uh, Mr. Domchev said, uh, we did uh, a right choice at right time and at right place. And I think uh, it's not limited to that triangle between the university and t TV center. It's actually was a great choice of Sofia and Bulgaria in general. And Bulgaria uh, did a great job on COVID as well. Actually, the number of cases uh, are relatively low and uh, uh, it looks like the situation gets back to normal. We are going to grow this uh, uh, R&D center further. We have quite specific plan on, on that. And together with Schaffhausen Institute of Technology, we are committed to increase level of uh, engagement with Bulgarian university, uh, Technical uh, University and uh, Sahia State University. And uh, we are quite on track, actually. I think we will invest more than 50 million, which we promised to Bulgarian government when we uh, got here. Uh, for, but we are quite on track to build uh, our Bulgarian presence. And uh, for us, Bulgaria will become the most important from a R&D standpoint uh, uh, country in the world. Uh, that's pretty much it. And I thank you. I'm thank you very much for your fast reaction with the Sergei's <laughs> presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I kindly remind you First of all, if you have any questions, please submit them through the Zoom Q&A interface. Dr. Stanislav Prutasov is the Chronis Technology President and Co-Founder. And now, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Prutasov, he will be speaking about the strategic importance of the Chronis Sofia R&D Center, including its greatest innovations in developing technologies. He will also be sharing more on the Kronis future plans for expansion in Bulgaria. Once again, to you, Stas. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me back. And hello, everybody, again. So uh, this time I will be much faster. Uh, I, I just want to kind of uh, remind uh, people how it all started. So uh, there were no acronyms two years ago in Bulgaria. There was uh, a small company, Tsoft, uh, founded uh, 15 years ago, and uh, who had acronyms uh, as their major and pretty much the only uh, customer. We work uh, 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 quite successfully with Tsoft, and it was a small company this very low turnaround and uh, very slow hiring. Uh, I remember we discussed with Clement Toshev, who is managing director of Acronis Bulgaria, 
uh, why he is not uh, hiring faster. And he was uh, explaining to me that uh, for T-Soft it's very important that every employee uh, stays for many, many years. And in general, it's not many IT engineers in Bulgaria. Fortunately enough, uh, we decided uh, that TSOF should join Acronis uh, uh, family. It took us quite some time. I think we started first uh, uh, talking about possible acquisition uh, in 2016, but at that time uh, TSOF was not ready. But in 2018, we finally uh, made a deal which I believe is win-win uh, uh, for everybody. Okay, okay. So in July, uh, we finalized the deal. And uh, as you can see, <clears throat> it actually did generate uh, some press in uh, Bulgaria because uh, at that time, uh, Bulgaria was not uh, seeing a lot of attention from uh, global IT companies, which is uh, not uh, uh, quite uh, fair from my standpoint, because uh, Bulgaria is actually a very good destination for IT companies. And right now, we can see that more and more companies are coming in, into the Bulgaria and building there. Uh, R&D facilities here. So uh, that's uh, essentially uh, the two years journey. We opened the office in 2018, uh, started building the relation with uh, universities, uh, local authorities, local media, local uh, partners. Uh, uh, the, realized quite quickly that uh, we want uh, our Bulgarian office to become one of the most important R&D facilities for Cronus. Uh, and quite quickly, we realized that we should actually uh, have Bulgaria as our main R&D office. And uh, we are moving along that path. And, uh, we did not uh, reset our uh, plans uh, despite the current situation with uh, COVID. Uh, and we, indeed, it uh, slows down uh, a lot of processes, especially in hiring or in traveling. Uh, but uh, we think that uh, we will be able to pick it up uh, in the second half of this year. And uh, we are not changing uh, our goals uh, and uh, targets. So uh, uh, currently, we have 276 uh, employees in our Bulgarian office uh, in different functions. Uh, the major functions I just mentioned is uh, uh, R&D which means quality assurance, product management, uh, uh, developers, uh, designers, uh, and uh, support DCO, data center operations, and uh, inside sales. So uh, we are quite on track to hire more than 330 people by the end uh, of this year. I think uh, maybe slightly taking it in 2021. And our goal is to have uh, 1,000 people in uh, Sofia by the year 2023. I think it's quite possible. Uh, for that, you def definitely need to transfer some expertise from other countries where we have R&D centers. And you need to attract foreign talent as well, not only Bulgarian talent, but for sure, uh, Bulgarian talent uh, is the major source of uh, our uh, R&D uh, talent pool in Sofia.
So key people in Bulgarian uh, office, uh, definitely uh, for, for sure, as a part of transferring expertise and technology, we had to relocate several people from other uh, countries. But it's good to see that even on this slide, uh, most of the people are Bulgarians. Uh, Plamen uh, will talk shortly after me. And uh, for, for the guys like Ivan Dudin or Ivan Petrov, Jan Kayanev, Dilan Toshev and Silvia Petrova is a really uh, very good addition to the team with uh, their own uh, uh, strong uh, uh, sites and uh, the ability uh, to build state-of-the-art expertise in the teams they are ruling uh, and uh, managing. Uh, last year, we had uh, uh, developers conference in uh, Sofia State University. Uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, uh, this conference in person is questionable this year. But uh, our PR and events team are working on setting up a virtual conference. And we really hope that maybe later this year, we will uh, we will be able to run this conference and not only uh, as a virtual conference, but uh, potentially as both uh, uh, as hybrid, both uh, with physical presence and virtual part as well. It's very important for, uh, for Bulgaria to have uh, uh, more developers conference. First of all, it generates a lot of for curiosity and interest uh, uh, in uh, young students uh, and uh, young uh, engineers. Second, it helps to bring attention and bring really talented people across the world uh, uh, to Bulgaria. And uh, I think it's very important to have this conference uh, running uh, regularly uh, for, for, for uh, both acronyms and local IT community development uh, standpoints. Uh, we have a number of awards, uh, definitely uh, uh, because we are uh, very serious in uh, having Bulgaria as our major R&D center. Uh, we got uh, certificate of uh, investment class A. Uh, it's uh, help us uh, to ensure that uh, uh, we actually have an attention from uh, uh, local authorities uh, helping us uh, to build a new home in Bulgaria. And uh, uh, beside that, uh, I'd like to mention uh, one award which uh, was given to uh, our Bulgarian managing director, Plamen Toshev as uh, an emerging leader. Uh, it's actually very uh, good uh, sign that uh, we found really capable uh, leader in Bulgaria who uh, can help us uh, to deliver on our plans. And uh, a little bit about uh, the way we work uh, these uh, uh, non-profit organizations, government organizations, and universities here. It's very important if you are going to build uh, R&D facility to have uh, very good connections with local universities. It could be joint researchers, it could be um, uh, for joint projects, uh, and so on and so forth. It both helps you uh, to understand and uh, uh, make better uh, the education and the skill set uh, students get at the universities. And you also uh, help uh, students uh, uh, for, to understand better uh, who we are, what we do, and what is our mission. It's very important to work with uh, local 
uh, government uh, uh, institutions because we can help them uh, to protect themselves better and they need the help of the company which has m m major engineering uh, workforce uh, here in Bulgaria uh, to work together on uh, protecting uh, the government from cyber criminals. So that's our plan. Uh, thousand people in next 24, uh, 36 months. And with help of uh, uh, Sahia and uh, Bulgarian government and with help of all of you guys, I think we are well on track uh, to uh, make this plan a reality. And uh, I want to thank uh, the whole uh, Acronis Bulgaria team for the hard work. And uh, I'm sure that uh, we will deliver all the uh, our plans, targets, and uh, products and uh, we will help our customers and uh, partners to protect their workloads, their systems, and their data. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Protasov. Stanislav Protasov is a Cronis Technology President and Co-Founder of Cronis. He will be staying with us for the Q&A session. Uh, at the end, I want to remind you that uh, you can uh, ask your questions via the Zoom Q&A interface. And another uh, remind, don't miss our special musical surprise at the end of our event. Mr. Protasov already showed you the key people in the Bulgarian office. Our next speaker is the managing director of Acronis Bulgaria, Plamen Toshev. Mr. Toshev will be offering an in-depth look into the development of the Acronis Sofia R&D Center. Mr. Toshev, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dragomir. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today on this special event. Um, actually, it's been an amazing two years, and I really hope uh, you all will learn something new about Acronis, about our products, but most importantly about our team in Sofia, without which none of this would have been possible. Um, so uh, without further ado, what exactly our team is uh, doing in Sofia? What do we do? Um, looking back at one of the slides which uh, from Sergey's presentation, which Tas showed earlier today, the Acronis portfolio. Um, well, basically, we do all of those things. Uh, we do work on cyber protection. We do work on cyber clouds, uh, including all the, all the products there, disaster recovery, cyber files. Uh, we do uh, work on uh, chronic cyber platform, cyber infrastructure, and we also provide very important uh, services in the entire region uh, from the office in Sofia. So, Basically, we already are a uh, key uh, R&D center, a key office, very strategic one for the company. And uh, as Tas says, uh, we really are committed to making it the most important one R&D uh, center in uh, Cronis globally. Can you go to the next slide, please? So uh, where do we work actually? Where do we do all of this work? Uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't imagine um, that uh, it was not, not going to be the office, the main place where we do our work. Uh, but uh, right now, actually, our homes are our offices. So uh, special thanks to our IT team uh, for being ready. Uh, to switch over, our infrastructure was ready and everyone else who was ready to uh, switch within a day uh, to fully remote work and stay as productive as they were before or even more productive as we actually saw in multiple areas. Um, we nevertheless, we still believe that the office is very important part um, for us. Uh, it gives you the focus, it gives you the ability to talk to 
your colleagues to exchange ideas. And so we actually um, plan to continue expanding it. We have expanded it five times uh, in terms of size since the beginning in 2018. Uh, and uh, we have also uh, organized uh, more and more parking places um, because we actually want everyone to be able to get to the office easy and safe, especially during the current conditions. It's uh, really important that you can get to the office uh, safe. And uh, we will be actually happy if we can turn more and more of those parking places into bike bicycle parkings. As you know, we have started that. Uh, it's just a matter of interest from our employees. Uh, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, can you go next, please? Um, so you have also seen on the staff slide uh, this uh, graphic on the right, um, Acronis Bulgarian employees. And you have also heard the number 1000 uh, is a target. So I actually want to say that uh, this is not, the number is not the target. Um, actually, the main target, as uh, it was mentioned earlier, is to make this office our primary R&D facility in the world, to make it the, the place where we develop, we create all our products, all our existing and all our, all our new products, because as you know, Acronis is a very innovative company. We do innovation all the time. Um, but uh, a few uh, additional um, things to mention uh, regarding our focus actually on the people and uh, not those numbers is uh, several facts. One of them is the fact that uh, 15 out of the 20 original TSOFT employees uh, are still with Acronis today. I really want to say special thanks to them. Um, I um, honestly was uh, confident that they will stay with the company but it has been a challenge for all of them. As, as Stas mentioned, a completely different company two years ago, they basically were able to change uh, their uh, work habits, their uh, work culture and everything to adapt to this uh, fast growing environment in Acronis. Uh, we also uh, keep our promises. So last year on this anniversary event, uh, we did show several projects uh, which we are doing based on feedback from our employees and all of them right now are uh, completed. So I would like to ask uh, uh, additional uh, feedback uh, from, from everyone. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate, contact HR, contact myself directly. If you have any feedback about the company, about the processes, facilities, whatever, uh, we really want to make uh, the, the place, the workplace, but also the entire company more efficient and a better place for you to work in. So uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much again for joining us today. Drago, to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Toshev. Dear participants, once again, I want to remind you that we have prepared a special musical surprise for you at the end of today's event. Also, please keep your question coming via the Zoom Q&A interface. Our last speaker today is the Williams Group CIO, Mr. Graham Hackland. Mr. Hackland will be sharing on how top global sports teams like Williams Racing take advantage of the tech to gain a competitive edge on how Acronis solutions help them optimize their data workloads. Mr. Hackland, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dragomir. Hello, everybody. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, at the opening, the grand opening two years ago. I can't believe it's been two years. And I heard all the plans that Acronis had for, uh, for their center in, in Bulgaria. It was my first visit to Bulgaria, actually. Uh, I got to go to the university with, uh, with Sergey. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, quantum computing that day from Sergey. It was a really good trip for me. Um, and the students got to hear a lot about what Acronis's plans were uh, in, in the region. And I'm, I'm really pleased to see that two years later. Plamen, I wanted to say congratulations to you and your team. Uh, to see the growth uh, that uh, you had planned is coming, to, is coming to bear fruit. You said that that region had a lot of highly skilled people and, uh, and you're proving it. So yeah, very well done and congratulations. 
So for us at Williams, I wanted to share with you a bit about how we use data, why data is so important, um, and why our partnership with Acronis is so important because they help us to protect our data. So a Formula One team has a car, two cars that go around a track, and you might think that that's it. Uh, there's some data that comes off the car, you analyze it, you decide whether to pit and change your tires or not, and that's all the data that there is. But actually, data has been so important to Formula One for uh, almost all of its history. And certainly since 1979, we've been getting data from the car itself. I mean, that's a very long time ago to have a connected car uh, and to have car telemetry. But Formula One often leads these kind of technologies and it's been fantastic to see over the years, Williams, in fact, introducing a lot of these new technologies uh, into the sport. So in addition to this data that we get from the car, we have a huge amount of data that we generate at our factory as we design, test and manufacture the car. So we have a wind tunnel, we have a virtual wind tunnel using computational fluid dynamics. Uh, we have our uh, driver simulator. So we use the same tools and technology in all of those uh, areas to make sure that when we put something uh, onto the car at the track, uh, it's gonna make a difference and it's gonna improve the performance of our car. Uh, and, and that data is critical that we have it in the, in the hands of the right engineer at the right time in order for our car to be developed all through the season. Uh, here, obviously, everyone's talking about it. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, how the, the, the pandemic has affected uh, Formula One and Williams. Um, but still, the data is so important in, in terms of producing a car uh, and going racing and being able to go racing. And every year we... Uh, it, it changed the regulations and we changed the cars that may be a little different for next year because of uh, the pandemic and uh, to try and help the teams uh, to cope with, uh, with, with the really tough times that we've all been going through. Um, but we've also taken that data at Williams and, uh, and one or two other teams have done the same, but certainly at Williams, the breadth of t uh, customers and technology projects that we've worked on, I think is much bigger than, than anyone else in our industry. And we take what we're good at in Formula One so electrification, lightweight materials, uh, aerodynamics, thermodynamics, and we apply that into other industries. And our Williams Advanced Engineering Company is running over 40 projects uh, in a whole range of industries. Obviously automotive, because that, uh, there's a very obvious uh, take uh, information from Formula One and from a car and apply that to different cars, so road cars, other, other racing series, uh, so we do that. But we've also taken what we do in Formula One. So we've been working really hard for many years in Formula One around protecting the driver and building uh, you know, this lightweight material, carbon fiber, but making it really strong and really safe for the human that's in the car. And we've taken that same technology and we've applied it uh, into hospitals to protect babies. Uh, and these are the things that I love about what we do at Williams. It's the racing is important. Uh, we had the first race this last weekend for the Formula One fans who may be listening to me today. I hope you got to watch the race. Uh, it, was a, it was a really fantastic race uh, under very difficult circumstances, obviously. The Formula One teams are traveling in a bubble trying to protect themselves uh, and, and everyone in the countries that they're in. Uh, so we have another race coming up next weekend and then another one the weekend after. So we're fully into the racing season. Uh, so it was fantastic to see everybody back racing but that technology that we, we use to help protect drivers in a Formula One car is protecting babies in hospitals, which I think is fantastic. And when you look at the rear wing of a Formula One car and how it uh, aerodynamically handles air, we've applied that same information, that same technology into fridges in supermarkets to make the air more efficient so that the cold air will go back into the fridge rather than out into the aisle where you're walking and getting cold. It pushes the air back into the, into the fridge and makes the fridges really uh, efficient. So that's been great to see, you know, we're helping with some of the biggest challenges that the world have around, you know, not wasting uh, energy and, and using renewable energy sources. Uh, so from reuse of batteries that we, we put them into uh, boxes that get uh, put onto uh, houses, um, to reusing uh, battery technology from, uh, from Formula One, we then uh, built the, the, the very first generation of batteries for the Formula E, the electric series that uh, I hope you've been watching as well. It's a fantastic series. Uh, we've just won back the supply uh, for uh, the Generation 3 Formula E battery. So we will once again be supplying the batteries to all the teams, which is fantastic for, for our company uh, to, be, to be applying that technology. But they took that, all that uh, technology that they put into, uh, into a Formula E car 
and they put it in a bicycle. So we worked with Brompton and created an electric bicycle as well. Uh, so you've got this battery that is huge, that, that you know, is the size of a car, and we shrunk it down into the pedelec of a, of a bicycle. And loads of other areas that we're applying all of this technology that, that we build, either lightweight materials and especially electrification. Uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, vehicles that we work with is a mining truck. Uh, so when you see that compared to a Formula E car, uh, you might think that the technology is so different, but actually uh, we, we're applying that same technology and the lessons that we've learned in both Formula One and Formula E, we're applying that to mining trucks and satellites and, uh, and all sorts of uh, interesting places. So that's why data is important to us. It's important to us for the performance of our Formula One car and for our Formula E team that we run. Um, but it's important that we can then reuse that data uh, and apply it into some of the world's most challenging uh, areas. And so my role as the CIO then is to make sure that that data is available to the right person at the right time. Uh, and that's, that can be tricky. <laughs> as we move data around the world, uh, we want to protect it. And one of the reasons that we partnered with Acronis is because in 2014, when I joined Williams, we actually got hit by two ransomware attacks. Uh, and that really gave me a wake up call. Uh, the first one came into our network and encrypted 50,000 files before we found it and stopped it. Fortunately, we were able to recover the data from tape. <laughs> we were still using tape in 2014, uh, but it was more luck than judgment. If, if that uh, malware had sat on our network for a couple of days and we hadn't noticed, we would have started to overwrite our backups um, and we may well have lost data. The second incident that we had was an individual, one laptop, uh, and unfortunately we lost data, which is the thing I hate the most. So we lost some data for that user. Uh, they'd been off network for a few weeks. Uh, their their uh, laptop hadn't been backed up. At that time, we told uh, all of our staff that it was their responsibility to back up their data, not IT's. I never felt comfortable with that, but I, I didn't have a way of taking the responsibility from them. So we used to tell them before you leave to go to a race, don't forget to back up your laptop. Uh, and that shouldn't really be the user's responsibility. So we went out into the market and we looked at who was out there and we selected a couple of uh, the vendors to, to work with and to narrow it down. Uh, and obviously we had heard of Acronis through the work that they were doing in sport, especially. And we looked at the, their technology and immediately realized that it met all of our requirements, uh, got us away from tape, got us away from that horrible backup window challenge that, uh, that, that everybody has. And we all think we've solved the backup uh, window challenge and then the data grows uh, you know, exponentially every year. Um, but we found that Acronis could help us not only to protect our data by you know, saving it in the cloud. And so we were able to restore very quickly because that's the other problem. You can back it up, but when you've got to go and find a tape that's in a safe somewhere and it takes you three days to recover some data, in Formula One, that's too long. Uh, Acronis give us uh, you know, literally from hours and sometimes days being able to restore data to being able to do it in minutes. Um, so that was hugely important. But for me, what, what allowed me to sleep at night was, uh, was the fact that uh, the, the AI engine that uh, Acronis use will help to protect us from ransomware that's not even known about yet which is different to what a lot of the, you know, the antivirus vendors do or what some of the other companies do. Uh, they can detect that something is uh, happening to your data or about to happen to your data and, and prevent it. And that was really important for us. So let me tell you a little bit about what's been happening to us uh, in, in Formula One and at Williams uh, through, the, through the pandemic. So through the COVID-19 lockdown, we were in Australia. Uh, preparing to race when it became clear how serious uh, this was, that it wasn't something that was uh, isolated to one part of the world. Uh, and, uh, and, and in the end, we weren't even able to run the cars in Australia at all. We all had to send our staff home uh, for two weeks. When they got back from Australia, they weren't able to, to do anything. Uh, and we realized that, and I, I logged it on the IT risk register, uh, we realized we were going to have to send everyone home. And they were going to have to be able to work from home. <laughs> and a Formula One team doesn't work from home. Uh, you have a factory, you have a facility that you're very proud of. We have this technology campus that I'm at today uh, and everybody comes to the campus. And if they're not here, they're, they're, they're traveling to a customer if they're in advanced engineering or they're traveling to a Formula One race. But on the whole, people worked here on this site and we had to transition to sending almost a thousand people home. Uh, and worse than that, they had to be able to work effectively. 
So that was the challenge. Uh, that was the challenge for us. And I believe that some of the Formula One teams have not managed to meet that challenge uh, because culturally in Formula One, it, as I said, it was it was about coming to the factory and you you work at the facility. Um, we had started a few years ago as part of our digital transformation that that Claire Williams asked me to look at. We had started to build this remote capability so that people could work from anywhere. We saw the need for our staff not to have to be here uh, on this site, especially during the really busy, uh, you know, new car phase. You could have people being on this site for 60 hours, 80 hours a week, sometimes more. Um, and and it wasn't sustainable. So we were we had already built a capability that allowed CAD designers to work from home, uh, which was really which was really unusual for them, but it gave them the possibility of seeing their family uh, during the week um, and you know, during this very busy car build uh, and, and car design phase. So all we had to do was ramp that up, <laughs> take something that was <laughs> good for 70 concurrent users, something like that. Uh, about 70 people could connect uh, onto our, our CAD systems concurrently. And we had to pivot that so that we could have almost a thousand people working uh, concurrently. And we did that within a week. I'm very proud of that. And uh, we had a lot of thanks from the executive and the board of Williams into the IT department and, and the hard work that everyone put in to, to make that possible. And then about a week after that, Formula One went into a lockdown. So nobody was allowed to work on the car anyway. Um, but after they came out of the lockdown, we were able to just support them uh, straight from home working, uh, you know, having the tools uh, you know, like we're using Zoom today and, and you know, we, we were using Teams and, and whatever uh, you know, one of these platforms was, was needed, we were able to support that, provide it and make sure that everybody could work, whether they were talking to a customer or bidding for a new customer project in advanced engineering or whether when we came out of the Formula One uh, shutdown, uh, our Formula One colleagues were able to really start uh, looking at how we prepare for a Formula One season during a pandemic. Um, but during that lockdown, uh, you know, lots of things happened within the, co within the company, uh, social meetups, uh, having a beer once a week together on a, on a zoom call was, uh, was unusual, but it was uh, something that we, we switched to doing. Um, but we were also able to do, you know, other really good things during, during this uh, time, the UK government put out an appeal, I think while we were still in Australia for, uh, engineering companies to look at. Uh, the ventilators and the technology that maybe could help with what, what turned has turned out to be a really truly tragic disease uh, that has really uh, affected the world and really affected the UK on a, on a huge scale. And so mm -hmm. a number of the Formula One teams got together, actually. We don't often work together. We're always competing. But a number of the Formula One teams got together and we worked with a company called Penlon uh, and we helped to design uh, and, uh, and and produce the, the they, the ramp up in their production was was huge. You know, thousands of units uh, were shipped to the NHS from Penlon with all of the Formula One teams supporting them, uh, all the UK-based Formula One teams supporting them. Uh, our staff who were uh, not able to work on Formula One because we were shut down uh, would go to their factory on the assembly line and help to build uh, these uh, ventilators. They would be working in the logistics. Uh, so depending on what their job was at Williams, they would be performing a similar function for Pen One, And it was wonderful to see uh, the, the contribution that, that these people made. And there were a number of other ventilator projects that we supported in different ways uh, during that. We also built, and I, I hope you can see, uh, we also built a number of these uh, uh, face shields, um, which we took to uh, care homes and NHS uh, facilities around our factory here in Oxfordshire in the UK. And we use them ourselves in the factory. So if I, if I walk into the factory, I know it's difficult to see this, but if I walk into the factory, uh, I will wear this face shield in order to protect my colleagues. Uh, so that, that's been really important for us as, a, as an organization that we have mm. helped to make a contribution uh, to fighting this horrible, horrible virus. Mm. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, everyone who's uh, watching today has been safe and well and their families have been safe and well. It's been really difficult uh, for, for everyone during this time to, to deal with this. But what's been interesting as well is data, right? We started out talking about data and Formula One data. It's been really interesting. Uh, our occupational health nurse went back into the NHS, working uh, with the NHS, working in the hospitals. Um, and since she's come back out, is, is helping with capturing data on 
uh, the pandemic, the effect that it has on people, why some people are, are, you know, are affected so badly that they end up on a ventilator, why some people have no symptoms. So data can be used in so many different and, and interesting ways. And I, I think uh, for some time, this data about the, the, the virus is going to be really interesting and really important. But we continue as an organization to go racing. We, uh, as I said, had this uh, amazing racing weekend uh, in the past weekend. If you didn't see that, please uh, watch this weekend coming up. We'll take all of the data that we <laughs> gathered from this weekend that, that Acronis helped us to protect, and we will be using it to help to, to get the car ready for this weekend so that we can do an even better job than finishing uh, in P11. So thank you very much for uh, inviting me today. It was an absolute privilege for me two years ago to be there. Uh, I was hoping to come back to Bulgaria sometime, so maybe in the future that will be possible. But thank you for uh, uh, allowing me to be part of the uh, event today. Back to you, Dragomir. Thank you. Thank you so much. We we'll love to have you back again in Bulgaria. Mr. Graham Hackland, CIO of Williams Racing Formula One team. Thank you so much. So, Graham, Stas Plamen, please come back on the stage for uh, the questions and the answers from the, from the audience. Be sure to turn on your mics and cameras Please, are you ready? So we're ready. Yes, uh, the the first question is to to Stas. There are several. Should I should I combine them, Mr. Podasov? Okay. Uh, what made you choose to open an R and D center, especially in Bulgaria? What advantages, disadvantages do you see after two years of establishing an R&D center here? Uh, that is not an easy question. <laughs> Basically, uh, <clears throat> we did the research uh, across multiple countries, uh, specifically in Europe. And Bulgaria has a number of advantages. Uh, first of all, uh, it's quite conveniently located, frankly speaking. Uh, second, uh, uh, Bulgaria historically has uh, quite good universities and quite good uh, education in natural sciences, so math, physics, uh, computer science, and so on and so forth. And what is also very important, uh, surprisingly, uh, for, across uh, the Europe, Bulgaria has one of the uh, most uh, favorable uh, tax regime for the companies uh, from uh, uh, high-tech uh, sector. Uh, it's better than in most uh, of European countries, and it's better than... Uh, in most countries in, in the world. <clears throat> and uh, apparently, uh, part of the uh, equation was uh, the existence of TSOF, who was our partner for many uh, years and uh, who was a local uh, uh, company here. So they do understand both Bulgarian mentality, Bulgarian uh, labor market, and uh, Bulgaria as a country. And that helps uh, a lot as well. As such, uh, the choice wasn't that difficult. As soon as we uh, reached an agreement with TSOFT, it was uh, quite clear that uh, uh, we need to develop uh, Sofia uh, as our R&D home. You said that the goal now is to hire 1,000 people in next 24, 36 months. In the first two years of establishing this R&D center, you hired 300. What kind of specialists are you looking for? Why would people come to work for Acronis? Again, to you, Stas. Um, quite simple. Uh, we are looking for, uh, for professionals in all the areas which we de developed in Bulgaria. It's uh, DevOps, engineers, quality assurance, product managers, uh, product designers, uh, 
uh, support, uh, inside sales, uh, and so on and uh, so forth. And uh, answering uh, the second part of the question, uh, I guess uh, the main reason to join our team is uh, because for Acronis, unlike most of the companies, uh, Sophia office is not uh, in a way secondary. I mean, uh, if you look at uh, international companies which already opened offices in Sofia, for them, uh, Sofia is kind of uh, just yet another office. And uh, if they will need to, uh, for example, uh, shrink their workforce, uh, they won't be uh, paying much attention uh, and won't be uh, very... Uh, uh, cautious about uh, cutting people in Sofia. For us, Sofia is a primary R&D center. And as such, here you can learn how to build products. You can learn how to build technologies. And that's actually both very challenging and sometimes even exhausting, but it's also very interesting uh, and attractive. Thank you very much. And now uh, a question for Plamen. How has the Bulgarian team been dealing with the COVID-19 crisis? How did it affect the team's productivity? Um, actually, uh, the team uh, has been dealing amazingly well. Um, everyone, uh, as I mentioned earlier, were able to switch to uh, remote work um, very, very fast within one day. Um, and uh, actually we, we did some, some check on productivity and uh, it turned out that uh, uh, even if in the first uh, couple of weeks there was uh, some effect on productivity, um, very fast, uh, very uh, rapidly uh, this disappeared. And uh, actually in, uh, in April and May, uh, the productivity went to all times high. So uh, actually, I really want to thank everyone. I know this was an extremely hard time um, when, when there is so much uncertainty, so much fear about your physical health, mm -hmm. about your uh, friends and relatives, uh, to be able to, to maintain this level of uh, efficiency and productivity uh, and be such a professional. Uh, is amazing. I really, I'm really very proud of the team and everyone, and um, it's really amazing. And uh, I, we are all extremely, extremely grateful to everyone in Sofia. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you, Plamen. Uh, now, a question, a couple of questions for Graham. The, the first one is a little bit funny. How would you, as a CIO, rate a crony software on a 10 point scale <laughs> <laughs> from one to be, ten be quick so, be quick yeah yeah so so one it's just a box <laughs> with the word acronis on five uh mm. it backs up some of your data and maybe one ransomware will get through and ten is what actually happens. Acronis have amazing technology. Uh, the, the AI uh, ransomware protection that backs up your data, allows you to restore it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to give it a 10. How's that? Uh, and Thank you, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite feature of Acronis software? Or can you suggest one? And, and please tell us, what opportunities can a Formula One team provide to software developers? So on, on the software developers, because I can only remember one thing at a time, on the software developers, uh, yeah, we, I, software development has become really a, a, a huge deal in Formula One. I think early on, it was mostly the on-car systems that were being developed, but now uh, we have software developers uh, across our organization, as, as all of the teams do. Um, you know, software can make a competitive advantage if, if we can build a strategy system that uh, is using AI and is giving us uh, access to data, more data, more quickly than the other teams. It's a competitive advantage. So uh, I think software developers uh, are really important in Formula One. Um, 
but uh, I, I'm not hiring anyone from Acronis because I need them to keep uh, developing the solutions from Acronis uh, to make sure that we stay ahead of the risks because the risk landscape is changing constantly uh, and Acronis are helping to protect us uh, uh, from that. Uh, yeah, I, I think your the, the other question was about features. So yeah. I, 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 don't, uh, I, I don't care about individual features. What, what really matters to me is to have that complete overall protection of, uh, of our second most valuable asset. Our most valuable asset is our people. Uh, uh, you know, Plamen just pay tribute to all of the people uh, working for Acronis uh, in, in Bulgaria. He knows as well as, as I do, people without our people, we would be nothing. Um, but our second most important uh, asset is data. And you know, being able to be sure that that data hasn't been tampered with at any point, even in the future, right? So we're building technology that's going into road cars. And in the future, we're gonna to have to prove that that uh, design, where it came from, uh, if there's an issue with it, or if we want to then redevelop it, we've got to show all that that data is uh, you know, intact, uh, unaltered. Uh, so th those are the kind of things that we're working with Acronis on to make sure that all of our data uh, is not just backed up, uh, and, and actually, for me, I always say backup is irrelevant. It's being able to restore it. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> I can back up loads of data, but if yeah. I can't get to it, it's no good. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot that uh, Acronis do. Maybe, not, maybe I didn't answer with an individual uh, uh, feature. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. Really and uh, another question for you. You actually mentioned it in your presentation, Graham, but let me ask you. It's from Ina. What was the most difficult challenge for your IT team during the COVID pandemic and what did the team learn and can advise to all? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I talked to quite a few CIOs. Uh, I'm on a group with uh, other sporting CIOs, especially for sporting uh, organizations. It's been a really difficult time because your primary product is going racing or playing football or cricket games and all of that was stopped. Uh, so that made it really tricky. But I think every organization that you talk to has been impacted in a big way uh, throughout, this, uh, throughout this time. Uh, the lessons that we learned uh, were that it probably less about technology and more about people and culture mm. and uh, and and being kind. Uh, you know, people are working from home. Uh, I, I don't know if it was the same uh, all around Europe, but in the UK, it was expected that parents would uh, become teachers for their children, and they had to do lessons. And so you've got people who are trying to, you know, work on a Formula One car and teach their children uh, during the day. So you you have to accept that it's not a, a well, Formula One's never been a nine to five job, but you have to accept uh, that, that during a pandemic, people, there are so many things happening to people. They've got vulnerable people in their life uh, that they're worried about uh, catching this virus. They're trying to look after their families. From, from, from you know, our point of view, it was trying to keep everybody in touch. Uh, we furloughed some of our staff, a lot of the IT staff uh, uh, were, were, were furloughed. So you've got staff who are working and staff who are furloughed. And both have different feelings, like why I, I'd quite like to be furloughed. And then the people who are on furlough think I would much rather be working. So it was a really difficult time for, from a people perspective. From a technology perspective, the, 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 uh, the threat landscape changed you know, overnight. We went from feeling like you have systems in place that, that protect uh, your infrastructure, your data, to having to allow people to use their own devices. Uh, we had people join the organization during the lockdown. So a new starter, I would usually meet them on their first day and tell them what to do and not to do with data. Um, I didn't get to meet them for a week or two and then it was over a, you know, over a Zoom session or a team session. Um, so a lot of our challenges were around people and making sure that they stayed connected and knew the role that they were playing, uh, felt supported um, and the technology looks after itself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And probably the, the last, the last question. Uh, it is from Mina Stoicheva, I guess is uh, to Stas. The initial plans of Acronis were to hire 400 people until the end of uh, 2020 and to hire 1000 employers in 2022. What are the reasons to change your plans for that to have 330 in uh, 2020 and 1,000 people in uh, 2023. Uh, 
Well, as far as I remember, actually, uh, initial plans were not talking about 1,000 people. And uh, when we prepared our uh, application for uh, investor class A, we were talking about uh, uh, three, 400 people indeed. Uh, Sergey, uh, from the very beginning, was very aggressive on the plans. And uh, after some time, he started talking about 1,000 people. I'm uh, more conservative. It's uh, actually my job to be conservative. So uh, I did not uh, uh, talk uh, about 1,000 people. I was uh, talking like uh, several hundred, 400, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, right now, since uh, we actually do see quite good growth in our business and we do see the potential. Uh, uh, I actually do have uh, 1,000 people on my plans and uh, we will have 1,000 people in Sofia and uh, surprisingly, uh, Sergey was right uh, as, as, uh, several years ago when he was uh, started talking about uh, 1,000 people. So to answer this short, actually there is not uh, much change in our plans. And you should also uh, understand that when you start with 18 people, it's quite difficult to have a reliable plan how you will grow uh, in three or four years, especially when you are uh, going to grow uh, like uh, almost uh, 100 times more than you initially had. Well, 50 times more, right? Because we had yeah. like 18 people. So it, it was just impossible to tell when exactly uh, how many people uh, we will hire. But uh, surprisingly, we are going actually pretty much on track with this 1,000 people. And if you think about it, I'm talking today about uh, uh, reaching a thousand people in 2023, which is kind of uh, pretty much the same as the end of 22. Make sense? Yes. Yes, I got you. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, thank you to all of you. That's unfortunately all the time we have for questions today. Thank you all very much for being a part of this special event celebrating the milestone two-year anniversary of the Acronis R&D facility in Sofia, Bulgaria. Before we close, I'd like to point to you some resources from Acronis. Look for an email with a link to the recording of the event and answers to any of your questions we didn't get to on air today. We hope you join us again for our series of upcoming virtual events and conferences on staying cyber fit. Thanks for you, for your time and attention. Thank you, everybody. Be safe, be well, be secure. Bye.